Johannes Gepp is concerned that for some endangered species living in the upper reaches of the Schwarze Zulm, Austria's wild and untouched Black River, this autumn will be their very last. Two private investors, a landowner together with a wealthy prince, plan to build a hydroelectric power plant. Gepp, an internationally renowned professor of zoology, took Euronews around the threatened area and has stressed the importance of the Black River for the stone crayfish, a species protected by European law. Despite living in the river, it has somehow been forgotten by Austrian authorities. Gepp's struggle is not just about saving the stone crayfish, it's about saving a sensitive ecosystem. Hundreds of endangered or rare species live alongside the stone crayfish. In the water we can find bullheads and the larvae of a protected dragonfly, the Balkan golden ring. There are butterfly species protected by European law, such as the Jersey tiger, and also some extremely rare Saxifraga flowers. If this ecosystem is changed in any way, all those species will be in danger. In the Austrian capital, Vienna, we have an appointment with the president of an international pressure group called Riverwatch. He tells us the clash of interests is not just a local issue, but instead a global problem. One of the very last untouched rivers in Austria is under threat of destruction. European law is going to be broken. If this is going to happen here, it can happen everywhere. Every river under EU protection would be at risk. Therefore, the impact of this case is much more far-reaching. It's not a local issue. It is a European issue. Austria declared the Schwarze Zürm to be a river of national importance in 1998. In 2001, parts of it were included in Natura 2000, and thereby the river is now protected by European nature rules. However, the top quality river water is looked after by the European Water Framework Directive. We meet one of the investors in the project, a local forest owner on the very spot where he has started preliminary building activities this spring. His Romanian workers and local protesters have clashed. One demonstrator was injured. These types of small hydroelectric power units are compatible with nature protection. This has been outlined by many experts who carry out long and detailed water protection and nature protection procedures. All those who know me know that I'm a tough fighter. Once an idea is in my head, I'm not willing to abandon it easily. Masser, living uphill in a traditional Austrian farm, got the OK from the regional Styrian government in 2007. But the national government, pressured by the European Union, has tried to stop the project. To protect the Black Zone, eco-warriors have set up a network of small camps across the countryside in order to ensure that Masser doesn't start to chop trees down. It's a colourful group, younger activists mingle with elderly people, united by their common goal to save the Black Zone. If 62% of the water is taken out of the river, and those are the official figures, it may even be higher than that, the river won't survive. It couldn't stay clean for long. The water quality will fall, the river will change completely, and will no longer be what it is right now, a natural monument, something almost holy. That will simply vanish. The Black Zoom is part of the very last 4% of untouched Austrian rivers. On average, there's a hydroelectric power station in an Austrian river every 8 kilometers. The small Black Zoom project won't solve our energy needs, that's clear. And therefore, I'm here trying to contribute in order to save this jewel. The group faced a harsh Austrian winter ahead and have been discussing how best to cope with the difficult conditions. They've also been debating whether to organize a demonstration in Vienna before the upcoming national elections. By channeling the Black River water downhill, investors want to produce electricity, but locals have also been protesting against plans to sell drinking water from the river. I'm taking part in this protest because I want to avoid the privatization of drinking water. It is not acceptable that two private investors make money from public assets. Nearby we have the town of Schwanberg, a very popular spot with tourists, and we want them to continue visiting this area. If the river valley is modified, nobody will have an interest in walking along the banks of the river. Our children and further generations should be given the chance to see rivers like this one.
In the capital of the state of Styria, Graz, the Social Democrats have been strongly supporting hydroelectric power, pointing out that Austria has no nuclear power but plenty of rivers. The region's Minister of Renewable Energy is preparing an action plan to further boost water energy. I believe that hydroelectric power is important to us because of our geographical situation which enables us to extend and further develop water power. We have clear climate protection goals drawn up by the European Union. On the River Moor, several new hydroelectric power plants have been built. This one at Gussendorf produces electricity for 23,000 households, thereby saving huge amounts of CO2 every year. Out of the 90 million euro investment, 15 million was spent on ecological compensation such as fish passes. In Graz, the head of the environment department claims the water quality of the Black Zoom can't be classed as excellent any longer. The recent administrative update procedure concluded that the Black Sum River is not to the highest standard and its quality can only be classified as good. That means by issuing supplementary project design conditions, such as a modern fish pass, this hydroelectric power project can be accepted. Zulm supporters recall that the water quality of the Black River has been classified as very good for decades. The EU Water Framework Directive prohibits any activity that would deteriorate the very few remaining waterways deemed excellent that still exist in Europe. Sabine Jungwirth from the Green Party and member of the Styrian Parliament suspects the regional administration has been altering records in order to avoid paying large fines from the EU. I'm expecting that the EU sends a clear message to Austria. The country shouldn't ignore EU laws, but it does. Apparently Austria wants to infringe EU rules. So the country has to bear the consequences. That's why the European Commission has to take the next step and bring the country to the European Court of Justice. Back in Vienna, the Austrian Ministry of Environment has sent a letter to the state of Styria reminding them to respect all EU rules. The European Commissioner for the Environment visiting Vienna to attend the European River Restoration Conference is clear in what action must take place, but will the European Union save the Black Zone? Since we have uh, issued a letter of formal notice, uh, that is obviously that we see uh, that with the activity they are infringing the European Union law. In the most uh, delicate cases uh, where the things do not uh, really, where the things are not settled, which is, by the way, not something which we would wish, uh, then uh, even fines can be imposed. But there is also some good news in the conflict riddled world of European river management. Some have improved their water quality thanks to the strict implementation of European laws. To honour those long-term efforts, this year in Vienna the European River Prize was awarded for the very first time, of course not to the Black Zone. The winner of the inaugural IRF European River Prize, the Rhine, the River Rhine.